we got some All cyberpunk right. news, right? Uh, yeah, you could say news. Um, <laughs> look, this patch note literally looks like a developer's to-do list. It is, this is too, if you are releasing a patch this long, your game is not in, I think it was like eight thousand words. I yeah. think it was someone counted. I've like never yeah. seen. I've never seen a patch note like this before. There's early access games that even if you combined all their patch notes, they wouldn't be this long. Yeah. Um, on top of that, CD Projekt Red has kind of announced. I guess pseudo announced because they haven't confirmed it, but they've heavily hinted at that they're not going to be adding multiplayer to uh, Cyberpunk 2077. They're going to make a standalone. Uh, <laughs> multiplayer adaptation of Cyberpunk 2077 while wait. their current game is not operational for most people. Or even um, on the PlayStation yeah, Store. Yeah, it's not <laughs> even on the PlayStation Store. Can it's... we just take a moment? How? How are we this uh, yeah. far out from release and still not on the digital store? over 100 store? after uh, the player left and it's still not there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... Will we see this multiplayer do you guys think come out as a free-to-play? Like... I think that's the only way to do it, honestly. Maybe. If they want to <sighs> recover, which I don't even think they care about recovering, because even if they release a second game and people have to pay for it, we probably will pay for it to, to see what's the hype about, you know? Um, they if need they to were know able to someone sky well. this. They need to just, yeah. they, they need to just pull it off of everything, fix it, make it an operational game, and then re-release it later, give it, discounted or free to people who already have like make it a free patch for people who already have it offer it at a discounted price get the base game to where it's going to be at because you're never going to be able to sell any sort of not even just multiplayer but sequel to cyberpunk until you get this first game operational and to a point where people can play it without having mission bugs and then restarting their game or loading old saves it's unplayable for some people and that's the big issue yeah also as well like because i've i played it um myself and i got as far as i could i just like story didn't really nag, like nab me as, sure. as, as much i wanted to plus also i finished the judy romance path and i'm like you know what that's, that's a great ending i'm <laughs> right done. that's, yeah, I, I'm that's like it. not even just the judy romance but that whole last mission was just so amazing. so amazing um but still like i didn't actually experience as many of those bugs as as everyone else seemed seemed to be having i mean i had like the funny bugs bro yeah. like you see like a car like halfway into mm. the ground or you see the t pose of of certain characters mm -hmm. but they were more like hilarious just to see than, than necessarily game breaking um but then again it's also like i was playing it on a series x and right now that plus playing on pc seems to be the only two places, two places that you can sort of yeah. like yeah. reliably play it and at least be able to try to be able to finish the game the fact that it still doesn't work for really for xbox one and uh and it's not even on the playstation store like i would have thought that with this patch coming out that they would be like oh and by the way it is now playable on the playstation uh, like on playstation 4 mm -hmm. like yeah. the fact that it's still not there yet like i have no hopes for any any of the other plans that they have for the cyberpunk universe i mean they, like they're already talking about oh we're also gonna be making stuff for which for the witcher and and all no. that stuff and i'm like uh okay Okay, fine. Um, but I mean, unless what it's about a Witcher Cyberpunk? 4... Witcher Cyberpunk? Yeah, How about Witcher... that? Oh no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what if one of the main issues too is that, like you kind of mentioned, is that it was kind of devoid of a really like gripping story, right? Mm -hmm. Something that you yeah. need in a cyberpunk world. And mm -hmm. I immediately drew this comparison from the release of Elder Scrolls Skyrim to the release of cyberpunk the main difference with those two games is one of them has an incredibly rich and deep world with lots of missions lots of you know things to do it's a full living world cyberpunk just felt like a, a tech demo and it from my experience looking in if you veered from the main path too much that's when people really started to get those major bugs yeah. so it's like you're almost forced to stay in this linear story in a world that you're telling people is an open rpg yeah right. yeah and i, I think, think that's the biggest the... problem um, yeah exactly like you were kind of saying like oh i hope that they, like they gotta take it off and do like a no man's sky redemption there's no redemption for this game because it's just not the game that they told us they were making yeah it's it's right. not an open breathing world you can yeah. pretend it is you can walk down the streets and pretend that you're living in in night city and and coexisting with with all these npcs but you're not 
you're just there for a story and some mediocre side quest. Yeah, and I empathize with 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 the devs over uh, absolutely at project right because it's like they they were like not only just thrown under the bus uh, a lot of it, but also just the like uh, the delays, the hack, the um, mm -hmm. like the, this game, like the the oh, I think it was also the oh, like er, like hyping it up way too early. We we knew about this game in 2012. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like this game has been yeah. in development for that long. Sure, not in full development up until like a couple of years ago, but still. It's just like it, it. I I almost want the only time I ever actually want a redemption story for a cyberpunk is uh, for the devs. Yes. Um, if they're able to kind of make the game that they want to make it great, because I think in a way that so the, the, a lot of the side quests and a lot of the, like the sort of side stories that you get to play in cyberpunk were actually really cool and they yeah, were really absolutely. great and and they had like they kind of like del delivered for me the promise of what. The cyberpunk genre is like mm -hmm. the, like i said the the judy mission like like kind of sm slight spoilers for it but if you're not going to be able to play it who cares but there's this one <laughs> like the land of her of her romance mission you go out to this lake and you basically get like you like she, like you don't know anything about it you go like you get you go into scuba gear and you go all the way down to the bottom of the lake and essentially it's the town that judy grew up in and it's mm -hmm. like it's been kind of completely like submerged and and for with her the catastrophe or whatever. And you get to sort of relive like the, she was able to connect your mind to hers, and you're able to relive her like her childhood memories in a way. And it was like that was such a well crafted mission that I was like I did not want it to end in, in any way, shape, or form. But when it came to like jumping into with with Johnny Silverhand and and your like your your issues with like with, like like that you have to do like you have to, this chip in your head and whatever you have to try to fix it it just kind of felt very shallow yeah and and it was like this is what like 2013 storytelling in games was kind of like um and it's just like it just felt like the game was i had like two different sort of stories and mindsets and they were kind of kept, they kept col like colliding with each other and just kind of made a bit a bit of a mess and yeah. uh it just it was sad to see I would, I would, there, yeah. there's also uh, sorry i just want to quickly point out there's also the the sinner man uh, side mission i don't know yes what, which oh which tackles God. like religion in in the cyberpunk world and what it means to to have religion and all that and it's it's super in depth and it, yeah. that was the one that really stuck out to me the most uh and i i totally see what you mean like it's it's so devoid of uh of layers when when you look at like johnny's storyline story in, yeah. in the main story it's like okay and they could have really done shallow. more though. They could have done yeah. more. And even sure. if Johnny's like story was very shallow, but the cyberpunk world was open world and you could explore mm -hmm. all the, we got what we were expecting from this game. I think that would have been okay because then it would give us a chance to live in this world and explore all those side missions and those side stories. Um, that would, I think have a lot of people appreciate it more than we can right now, which is really surprising that they even announced a Vancouver studio because we all thought after cyberpunk, like what are they gonna do? Like they lost tr like, trust in a lot of consumers. You hear reports about their shareholders, you know, kind of buying out of like anything or invest, taking their investments out and not really having that faith in them. But I think that just shows why studios don't care if their product sucks because they still make money. They still the made money off of yeah. cyberpunk. That's true. I have a theory that the reason why that they that they they decided to kind of own like own that studio because that studio was always a sort of a, a support studio for yeah, them right. uh, for CD Project, and I think in a way that 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 could have been like them buying them out um, would all would kind of almost been damage control for the shareholders because they, mm -hmm. they probably were like you know what we're out we're gonna make our own game now we're not like we're, we're like you, the contract's done oh, we'll wait till the contract is ending and then they're like well whoa, whoa, hold on hold on. And then they decided to be like, okay, we're gonna buy them. They were always a good support st studio for us, and and they'll get to the help with all this stuff. And and now they kind of like locked it in. And I, I have a theory that that could be the maybe the reason, is just to kind of appease the, the shareholders and try to sort of et, like close up that sieve of of just developers that are leaving and, and studios and shareholders and stuff like that. Like I have a theory that that could be it. And I, and I hope I hope that's not the case because then it's like that just like I feel bad for them. The Vancouver studio that pigeonholes them, right? Exactly. Um, and so it'll be. I don't know. I just, I want this game to do like do well just for the dev's sake, but also it's just kind of like when when is it when is it time to sort of like cut your losses and just and just move on? Yeah. yeah. 
We, I think after they start delivering on the initial promise, like at least get the base consoles up and running, get that next gen upgrade uh, out and a few pieces of DLC. And then I would say have that conversation of what do we do next? Do we do Witcher 4? Do we do more Gwent? I don't know. Oh, but God. My, my issue is no. how do you prior to release, immediately after release, and continually now a couple months after release, have the bold faceness to tell people that this was a game that was going to operate on last gen consoles. Yeah. There there was no way in any world that they had this prepared for last gen consoles. And I think they would have been fine if they would have just announced it as a next gen and a PC exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. But but that to me is and like the continual like doubling down on that really does not show faith for the heads and the faces of, of CD Projekt Red. And like I said, all the or like you guys have said, all those developers are talented and they've proven themselves and made amazing games. And there's some small amazing stories within that title. It just sucks that some of them will never be experienced because of you know the decisions of higher ups. Yeah. Um, well, you know, hopefully their next patch notes will be, you know, four page shorter and a little bit better. <laughs> we can hope. Yeah. We could hope. We could hope. Uh, but that's pretty much it for us today. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Can you let us know what you have coming up and where people could find you? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, uh, there's a few places I, like, I, I can't really talk about yet because, you know, NDAs and stuff, but uh, expect more from me coming uh, very soon. Uh, especially in the month of May, there's um, in, in May there's a Global Accessibility Awareness Day that's happening on May 21st. So there'll be some things I'll be ta uh, I'll be able to do then. Um, but uh, if you want to be able to follow along with me, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Steve Saylor, uh, or you can be able to follow me on Twitch, twitchtv Steve, or on YouTube, YouTube.com/snowball. Um. um <laughs> The, the, the snowball just reminds me of Simpson Snowball. So I know, I know. It's it, it like I had that I had that URL since like 2005. So I've I've I'm I've been on YouTube for quite a while. I was I was happy to be able to get that that URL, but that was like my old nickname <laughs> when I was a kid. So that's why it stuck there, and not just it's not just Steve Sailor. <laughs> and Steve-O, what do you have coming up uh, for the website? Uh, hmm. That's a great question. Um, I, got, I got a couple things in the mix. Uh, just recently, I put up an article just talking about some uh, some hidden gems in terms of uh, Soulsborne games. I, I love that kind of genre of game. So when you when you look at Dark Souls and Demon Souls, there are a lot that go under the radar. So I just kind of highlight yeah, highlighted a couple uh, that really stuck out to me over the years. But uh, yeah, after that, I don't you know we're kind of in this like mid tier drought of games. Yeah. We're kind of just waiting for yeah. resident evil, stuff like that. Mass effect trilogy. So yeah, I'm kind of just biding my time. Obviously Warzone, uh, big, big content update coming. Ooh, so later in April, just, yeah, I, I, I'm more or less just holding out for that one. And then, yeah, some great content going up on squad state for sure. All right. And Malik, how about you? Uh, there's lots of Valorant going on as usual. Uh, Overwatch League starts again this weekend, so I'm excited for that. Uh, I am going to be streaming every Monday and Sunday over awesome. at Live W Malik. Yeah, going to be covering all the Valorant news, just playing random games. Uh, and like Steve said, there's kind of a content drought right now, um, so just kind of waiting for something to come along and take my attention again. Yeah. All right, and uh, you can check out their articles and all that Valorant news at squadstate.com as well as on our socials, uh, squad, twitter.com slash squadstate. If you have any suggestions on what we should talk about uh, next time, please let us know. As for myself, I'm just going to be watching Steve uh, <laughs> stream and create content. So follow him, watch him, yeah, and then come back here yeah. for the podcast as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. We greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Bye. We'll